God, it's dark around this bit. You just come out of the light. Good afternoon, YouTube. It's the calm biker here. Have another quick lunchtime ride, so I thought I'd record another vlog. And uh, the topic for today's vlog is a day late, actually. Yesterday was World Diabetes Day. Um, I, I didn't know. Um, so I missed that one completely. So I thought today I'd talk about diabetes when really I should have done it yesterday. Diabetes is quite important to me. Uh, there's a few reasons why. I've got a family member who has type 2 diabetes. Uh, a couple of our dear friends of uh, myself and the wife. The, uh, the chap, he's got type 2 diabetes and his wife's got type 1 diabetes. Oh, and of course, I've got type 2 diabetes. Which makes it pretty important to me. <laughs> Now there's not a lot you can say about diabetes in a five minute or six minute vlog, but let's see what we can squeeze in. But yeah, diabetes is uh, essentially, I suppose, it's a symptom more than a, a disease. Um, essentially, diabetes means sugar. Uh, the full name for diabetes is diabetes mellitus. Mellitus also means sugar. And all it means is that there's too much sugar in your blood and when we talk about sugar and I'll keep saying sugar because it's what most people understand what we're actually talking about is glucose because there's lots of different types of sugar glucose is the one that ends up in your blood and the one that causes you problems now when you've got too much sugar in your blood it starts to do damage to things and things can't repair themselves because the sugar's too high so uh, things that start to get damaged, generally it's your blood supply, so the tiny little blood vessels that are all around your body start to get damaged and they die off. And that means that you lose the blood supply to places, and that's obviously not good. It also means that the blood supply to nerves disappears, and that's why when you see people who have lost feet, in a lot of cases the diabetes itself hasn't caused the foot to you know, fall off. What's happened is that the blood supply has died, the nerves have died, and the person has stood on something. And people can stand on nails um, if they've got severe damage uh, to the nerves, what's called neuropathy, and not even realise they've done it. And then the wound becomes infected, and they don't know because it doesn't hurt. And eventually the infection causes them to, to lose a, a foot or whatever it might be, and obviously that's pretty bad and pretty much every organ that you've got can be affected by diabetes and this is why people end up having uh, all sorts of problems it's not just losing limbs it's heart attacks strokes cardiovascular disease um, you know all manner of of nasty things so if you've got diabetes you really need to stay on top of it now there's two types of diabetes and people get them confused and you'll, you'll hear people with type 1 grumbling about people saying uh, that they assume they've got type 2 and in fewer cases vice versa people think I've got type 1 when I say I've got diabetes because I'm not fat and people assume you're going to have type 2 if you're fat and that really is just a complete myth type 1 really means that your, your pancreas is failing there's a lot more detail to it than that we've only got 5 minutes but your pancreas is failing or has failed and you do not produce insulin and insulin tells your body to get sugar out of your blood without insulin most of the time the sugar just stays in your blood your sugar levels get higher and higher doing more and more damage and then you've got problems in type 2 it's slightly different your pancreas still produces insulin quite happily in fact, in a lot of cases, it produces far too much insulin, known as hyperinsulinemia, which is also in itself damaging. And the reason it produces too much is that your muscles, which are supposed to listen out for the insulin signal, don't hear it. You've got what's called insulin resistance, so the insulin is essentially ignored. 
so your body pumps out more insulin to say oh, come on get rid of this sugar and that means you end up with lots of insulin in your blood which is bad for you and you end up with lots of sugar in your blood because your muscles are ignoring the insulin signal so the end result is quite similar you know, you've, you've got too much sugar or too much glucose in your blood if you're type 1 because your body still reacts to insulin, insulin you don't have any of it you tend to be treated with insulin injections so you'll eat something and you'll work out just how much that's going to affect your blood sugar according to what you've eaten and you'll take an appropriate insulin injection and your body should react as if you'd just eaten that thing and there was nothing wrong with you with type 2 uh, in some cases it's treated with diet and exercise because it's what you put in your mouth that increases your blood sugar so if you can avoid putting that stuff in your mouth you don't get the blood sugar spikes, you can keep your sugars down you do the right exercise, you can force your muscles into taking up insulin by exercising uh, oh sorry, taking up blood sugar by exercising without the insulin being involved then you can keep your blood sugar down that way some people struggle with that, it's very hard to be honest, to uh, control your, your uh, diabetes just with diet and exercise because it means cutting out most of the things that people like eating uh, so I actually control my diabetes that way at the moment so I don't eat any bread I don't eat any pasta rice nothing with sugar in all these things have gone out the window and some people just can't do it they, they don't want to or they can't because you know these things are addictive and it's very hard to give up sugar because of the physical addiction so those people end up going on to drugs um, the first drug that most people go on to is one called metformin uh, which is designed to um, increase insulin sensitivity and increase the amount of insulin you produce you end up moving on to other drugs like the sulfonylureas or sulfanureas I'm not sure it's pronounced and those drugs uh, work in a different way um, in some ways a bit similar to the way that insulin itself works but there are drawbacks to those drugs that can have quite nasty side effects and a lot of type 2 diabetics end up in the end on insulin injections too when it comes to talking about diet and exercise to control type 2 diabetes um, it's, it's quite simple really what you're trying to do is remove carbohydrate from your diet um, now there's lots of different types of carbohydrate and you'll get told by various diabetes charities and so on that if you get complex carbohydrates they uh, are, are absorbed more slowly so they reduce you know, they increase your blood sugar by a lesser amount having said that they still do increase your blood sugar and if you're diabetic that is still a problem um, so sugar in kind of table sugar form which is half glucose half fructose that will just raise your blood sugar incredibly quickly potatoes although are a complex carbohydrate are actually absorbed incredibly quickly and are not much slower than pure sugar in raising your blood glucose but then you've got things like rice and pasta which are supposed to raise your blood sugar more slowly I tend to find that even the smallest amount of bread or pasta or rice increases my blood sugar beyond the point that I'd like it to be so I just avoid it altogether Um, so you're, you're removing those things from your diet and you're adding other things so a lot of people will add protein um, people start, start eating lots more meat uh, I don't, I'm vegetarian but that's one of the things that you can do I tend to eat a lot more fat and that's a, an interesting one because when I started the doctor told me well that's possibly a bad idea you don't want to be eating high fat because it increases your cholesterol um, actually my when I started my cholesterol was borderline high when I cut out the carbohydrates and added in lots of fat and I mean lots probably 70% of my diet is fat probably 25% is protein and only 5% carbohydrate actually my cholesterol has gone from borderline high to completely normal and that's because as they're now starting to learn actually it's eating things with carbohydrates in that raises your cholesterol in the first place then the exercise side of it is not we're not talking running marathons um, I do a bit of light exercise I sometimes get out on my push bike 
Uh, now I might do 10 or 15 miles on the push bike, but actually from the lowering the blood sugar point of view, the first mile is quite enough. And the exercise lasts as well, so it, it reduces your blood sugar immediately, but it also depletes the glycogen reserves in your muscles. So your muscles then start sucking up sugar out of your blood, and that can be up for up to 24 hours. So it's not like you have to eat and then exercise every time. You can maybe do a little bit of exercise once a day, and that's that's plenty. You know, no more than half an hour. And I suppose the final thing that I want to talk about on the point of view of looking after yourself with diabetes and it's an unfortunate part about living in Britain is if you've got type 2 diabetes uh, they won't give you a blood sugar meter until you reach the point that you're on insulin and of course by then the damage is all done you know, your, your pancreas has essentially failed at that point you're on really nasty drugs um, I think you might be able to get a meter if you're on some of the stuff in your ears because they can lower your blood sugar too far and they'll give you a meter so that you don't have lows. Lows can put you in a coma. But they won't let you have a blood glucose meter. They won't pay for it. And a blood glucose meter is your ally if you've got type 2 diabetes. Because you can eat something, you can wait for an hour, test your blood and find out what's happened. You test your blood in the morning to see how you've done overnight, if your blood sugar's high in the morning or not. Test it an hour after each meal, two hours after each meal, and it allows you to understand which foods affect your blood sugar. Because for me, you know, white bread is a nightmare. I don't eat brown bread either, to be fair, but you know, bread is a, a nightmare. It rockets my blood sugar up. So I don't, I don't, use, I don't eat it. The doctor would say I should eat bread. Um, but as I say, it has this horrible effect on my body, so I don't. For some other people, bread might not be a problem. But without that meter, you just don't know. So how are you supposed to look after yourself properly if you've no idea how bad your illness is? Any other illness, if you've got uh, a chest problem and you're coughing, and one day you're coughing twice as much as another, and you're coughing up blood, you'll be straight back to the doctor or the hospital. With diabetes, there's no outward symptoms of high blood sugar until it's really high, well beyond the point where it's doing you severe damage. And the only way to know whether it's that high or not is to test your blood. Anyway, I'm nearly home now. Just got to pop across this roundabout and I'm just about back. I'm going to pop in and I'm going to uh, do my blood sugar check. Now then, this is not something I would normally do with my helmet on. But as I can't be bothered to fiddle about moving my microphone because the uh, the sound quality seems reasonable, and after I've moved it, I'll no doubt mess it up. I shall do it with the helmet on. So this is my test kit. Uh, I've already preloaded everything, so I don't have to fiddle about with everything. Uh, this basically is a little needle to jab a hole in yourself. And that's spring-loaded. Here are my test strips, which unfortunately, being type 2 and on a heap of medication, I have to pay for myself. And here's a little gadget that does all the measuring. That's all we do. Pop a test strip in the machine. Pick a finger that's got the least scarring on. Pop a hole in it. And then we just need a little drop of blood. Pop a bit of blood on there while that's measuring. Bit of pressure to stop the bleeding. And there we go, 5.7. Which is a little bit higher than I like it to be. But not too bad. So that's all there is to it. Uh, if you are a type 2 diabetic and your doctor hasn't got you doing this, well... I would highly recommend it because it allows you to see exactly uh, how your blood's doing and what different foods are doing to your blood so that you can remove things or lessen things in your diet that are causing you physical harm. Thanks for watching YouTube, ride safe and I'll talk to you again soon.